Do you believe addressing climate change is a moral imperative within the framework of faith and or belief? And if so, how does that influence your personal action? Um, I was still going to like link to that saying that from like a youth perspective, all you can sort of do is make like individual changes. And I think that's like where it begins because obviously as the youth and like as the future generation, we can't go out and start, you know, changing government policies overnight. We can't go out, start changing the energy that the type of energy that we're using, but working out, working on these things, like from an individual level is what's going to ultimately make a big change. You have to start somewhere. You have to start small. So I do think it is like, I do think is like taking care of the planet is a moral sort of goal that everyone should have because it, climate change brings up new inequalities, new injustices that all of us, you know, we see, but we maybe you don't have a deeper appreciation for it because we're not like on the front line. But I think if you start one by one opening each other's eyes to this, then you can make a big change and look at it from a moral perspective that you should have that appreciation and respect for what's going on. Well, uh, the prophet said that even if the day of judgment is starting and we have like a seed in our, in our hands, then we should prioritize like planting that seed and growing that tree just to like, um, and also it's, it's absolutely forbidden for us to harm any plant or any animal unless it's a necessity for us. So, um, like if there's an ant and it's doing like absolutely nothing to you, some people would like go and just merge it for without a purpose, but it's forbid, for, forbidden for us to do that. And so what all of this does is it basically empowers you to take action. And a lot of young people I work with have the same question. They ask me, Vardhan, what can I even do about climate change? What can I do about nuclear disarmament? In fact, there's a lot that we can do. As, as you mentioned, like the smaller things, those are very much there. And I personally, professionally, I, I, I'm into lobbying. I'm, I do policy and public affairs. From that perspective, um, Westminster is always open for young opinions. I mean, uh, often up in sitting in the committees for education and APPGs for like education and climate and so on and so forth, net zero. Um, they actually value the ideas that young people bring forward. So I think from that perspective, there are the smaller things that you mentioned. There's sort of the bigger things and then often we feel that they're out of your reach, but from a perspective of Buddhist faith, um, it's important to sort of have that sort of courage to be able to just do a Google search on how I can tell the UK government about my opinion and it would give you the right. Um, I also think, I don't know if this is a bit too, this cool, but I think a lot of the, 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 fo the forces that, uh, try to, you know, break down communities, whether that's capitalism or imperialism or, you know, whatever those forces are, they work on people being divided and they work on people not, not appreciating their interconnectedness with everyone in the world. But if we can come together as people of different faiths and as people of all different backgrounds and realize that we are connected in the, in the problem and everything we do, especially I think in, in a country like England where the climate crisis is less, we're not on the front line of it. If we are able to have that wider appreciation um, and understand that it is a moral imperative to look after other people, then I think that that is where we can go forward to work with for climate change. <laughs> uh, yeah, I want to start with saying that I think I think addressing climate change does require global cooperation, like you said, and um, I think that regardless of like your faith or background, I think everyone should come together to tackle this because it's a shared like problem and also I want to say that um, I think that climate change often like it disproportionately affects vulnerable communities like for example where I'm partly from Somalia um, climate change because of climate change there's a lot of like droughts because of like the lack of rain and so um, I think that we should come together for this um, I think the biggest one for like youth at the moment is definitely social media. How like 20 years ago, we were going to spread awareness on climate change through our phones and like get millions and sometimes billions of different views. Um, I definitely think that plays a big role. 
And I also think like Greta Thunberg, she went to like such extremes of like actually coming out of school and like leaving her education, getting everyone to follow her. So I think, I think the youth have definitely made a big kind of impact and they've definitely left their mark of how they're going to, not necessarily how they're going to actually, you know, help climate change in itself, but they've definitely made their point that they care and they want the people in power to make that change now before it's too late. You can see it, like you say, with Greta. You can see how originally Greta was a one girl army outside her school or outside the parliament, you know, and, and that ended up in the, the global climate uh, strike, school strikes for climate and, and global kind of, um, uh, what's the word? Demonstrations, you know, and it is daunting and it is uh, often... and. You know, often it is difficult, but I think yes. you have to believe that you can make a change, even if it's on a small scale, even if it's amongst your friends, because otherwise, like, you know, what else do you have? You know, is that the kind of empowerment which is central to Buddhism, I think <clears throat> across the world, 12 million members, uh, one thing that Buddhism has mostly done for all of them is really empowered them. And when you have 12 million people, <clears throat> all caring about the environment and does make a difference. Um, mostly no indigenous Buddhist would say that, yes, let's dispatch the environment. And that I say with confidence because um, I would never, and we're all uh, sort of one in mind. <clears throat> so cultivating that sort of um, inherent uh, compassion for your own self and the environment and 12 million people, I feel that it in itself is a very big deal. Second. Um, sure. um, my friend Sheriff over there, yeah, so she doesn't really believe in, well, she believes in it, she knows it's happening, but her opinion is that she doesn't want to deal with it at the moment because <laughs> it's not going to catch up with her while she's still alive. So, therefore, she doesn't really want to take, like, part in any changes. But obviously, that's not my opinion of her. But when I look at it from the Buddhist perspective, and that's where I feel faith is important, to discuss issues like climate change, because often in such issues, we're very prone to dis disparaging the other person, very prone to just putting up walls and bouncing it back. And I'd say from a Buddhist perspective, if I come across someone who does not believe in climate change, my first reaction will not be like, oh my God, it will genuinely be out, out of deep respect of their perspective. And that is how I feel we can prevent fights. From the Buddhist perspective, when you look at any person in front of you, as I mentioned, race, gender, caste, creed, sexuality, whatever it might be, there is only one thing that comes in my heart after like 50 years of practice and it's respect. So whenever one of my friends who've met me used to ask me what's your first impression of me, that's my standard answer. So they hate playing like these uh, icebreaker games with me. But anyway, um, <clears throat> um, so yeah, I think how can you resolve these fights or make sure that they don't happen in the first place is to really take a faithful perspective towards the bigger issues in life. And when you do so, you will realize that two people who are fighting or anyone who wants to pick a fight with you, you will see through them and really start respecting their opinion. We should make it more engaging for young people because um, like, I feel like young people won't listen to a like, or a baby like um, video or something. For for example, I spoke about like how TikTok, um, like we could, we usually engage with um, things that are more fun and we feel like the videos about climate change aren't as aren't engaging or as engaging to get that much support and influence. So um, we like spread awareness, but in an engaging way for young people. I also think the way to have a government that focuses on issues such as climate change is to have people who are not going into government simply to have power or to get money. I think we need people like people who are coming to an event like this. If you have, you know, honest and good beliefs about what we can do for the world, that's the kind of thing that will bring on good leadership in the future. We need people who, who, believe in a better world to be the people in power, not people who just want to make themselves in a better position. Um, but everyone is capable of being a leader 
or, or being involved in change. You don't have to be a leader to be involved in change. And I think the government, whatever form that will take in 20, 30 years time, will have to be better for climate change, but will also be better because we will be the ones in power.